All right, welcome back to SGDQ 2023. I am Dan the VP, and you are in a treat for the double feature of Curse of the Moon. I, I just want to say it's an absolute pleasure to be able to show off the sequel and to follow up Bobby. I mean, it's only Monday, and it I'm is, already, like I'm on top of the world. It so is only Monday, and we're we're just a little bit halfway through this Bloodstavania block. So. Keep on the edge of your seats, because yes. Dan's going to wow you right now. You've seen the prizes. We've got enticing incentives. You've got about 35 minutes to donate until you've got to get ready for Symphony of the Night. So we're going to jump right on in. We are playing Episode 1, Normal Veteran. And thank you so much for donating to upgrade to this difficulty. Uh, it's a lot of fun to show off uh, the tricks and the teamwork that are going to be involved. We'll get into what the run means and all of that stuff when we go ahead and start on up. And uh, I'm not as good of a voice actor as Bobby is. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and skip through all the lore. And time is going to start whenever we gain control of Zangitsu. Yes, he is back. And that is going to start in three, two, one, go. All right. So you're going to notice something right off the bat. Uh, Zangitsu's got like some bum knees or something. He missed his rehab. He's Derek Rose. He's <laughs> I get that <laughs> reference. <laughs> Sorry, go but, ahead. But uh, he, uh, we're playing on the normal mode, and this is what you would get if you just start the game up and you play it fresh. This is kind of the default run on what I think is more of the classic game difficulty. And we've got a little bit of easy platforming here to start the game off, and I would be remiss if I didn't mention um, a lot of the runners that have really brought this game to the forefront. Uh, the current world record hunt holder, Guy Hurst, over in China is just insane. He has added so much to this run over the last year. Shout out to Laxus, shout out to Lord Yarnum, shout out to Yesterday. It is a, a treat to be one of the top runners in this game. And uh, what do you say, Bobby? You ready for another uh, eight stages of Bloodstain? Oh, absolutely. Uh, we got a lot of consistency this time around. Doors actually work. Floors exist. Stairs you'd never face through anymore. Like, this is a pretty polished version of Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. Yeah. So Inti, you... Inti creates not only upgraded the graphics, as you can see this beautiful parallax scrolling background, uh, but they also fixed a couple of things. Yeah, uh, you have you still going to be having kind of like the same sub weapon set as uh, you know as uh, in regular Curse of the Moon one. So you got Ball and Chain, nice, nice damage boost right there. You got Ball oh, and yeah. Chain. You have your Magic Charm. You have the Demon Essence. A little bit later on in the run, things are going to get really, really buffed though, and I cannot wait for Dan to show it off. Yeah, Zangitsu might not be able to run, but he is going to be our tank for a lot of the run until we get a. Uh, well, you know, I'm not going to spoil that bit. If you don't know what's coming up, you're in for a treat. Yeah, you're Inti Koreans kind of had like their free reign with this, uh, with this uh, kind of like iteration of the series where Bloodstained Curse of the Moon 1 was kind of developed in the span of six months. And that's not bad. Like, like, oh, they, it, was yeah. a it was a comfortable enough span for them to do it. But now they just have all of these little bells and whistles to, you know, work with and implement into the game to make it a very, you know, eye-popping experience. And just like in Curse of the Moon 1, I'm going to try to hit my math. We're right at 12 weapon points, which are in the upper left-hand side of the screen now. And we're coming up on the first boss. And, Bobby, you're always better with names than me, but this is the Drago symbiote, I believe. It's a dragon with a platypus on for a tail. It's basically a bird, and yeah. we all know Birds. how Bobby feels about birds. They're jerks! And I, I agree. So there's a lot of ways that you can actually take on this fight in subsequent modes, but the, the, the quickest course of action is letting that magic charm tick either onto the main weak point or... Uh, you can actually hit it physically with the magic charm, and that also inflicts a good amount of damage. So yeah, that's a really good that fight. Double there. hitbox, yeah, and those uh, you're gonna see a lot of jumping strikes like that as well, as well to try to double up the hitboxes because then get to attacks very quickly. Mm -hmm. And that's stage one done. Yeah, that's stage one. We're already there. We're going to pick up the first ally of the run, and this is Dominique. And from what I've been told, just ignore Ritual of the Night. This is not canon, and she is our friend. 
Yeah, yeah. No, no spoilers, but like these can be treated. Curse of the Moon and Ritual of the Night, respectively, can be treated as separate universes. Uh, in, in their little, you know, continuity. So you'll be seeing the same amount of, like, you know, uh, character likenesses. And especially if you unlock the later additions, I'm sorry, later, you know, uh, modes, if you will, you'll actually see the old folks make a comeback. And it's actually really, really nice how the stages are remixed to complement their special abilities as well. Yeah, I really love the level design philosophy in these first couple of levels because they give you a new ally and then they give you a level that really highlights all of their abilities. So it's fun to play casually because you're like instinctively learning how to play the character, but then routing the speed run, you're still able to use all of those abilities just in new and faster ways. And there's been a lot of optimization, especially in screens like this, where we're gonna try to make an obstacle for ourselves and hope RNG works out. Yeah, so let's, oh, hold on. Uh, oh, no. Mm. We're going to go over here and do the old-fashioned way. Yeah. There is uh, three possible outcomes there, and that was the one we didn't want to see, but uh, it is a short and small time loss. <laughs> Again, let's talk a little bit about uh, who we just picked up, Dominique. Kind of like a mix between Miriam that you saw a little bit earlier in the last game, but also if you play Castlevania Bloodline, she does wield this really Lacard-esque spear, which you can use to pogo off of enemies, hittable objects, and also for her sort of ultimate sub-weapon, can actually channel the Lacard uh, spear power and kind of use it to vault. High yeah. distances. The size of the hitbox on her spear is really important. There's a lot of stuff we can take care of. Oh, oh good. That uh. get not taking damage there is extremely important because there's a lot of RNG coming up that you don't want to have to swap between characters to um, not die as Dominique. Mm -hmm. All right, there we go. Nice. And uh, every time we swap. You're going to notice the game pauses just a little bit, and that all of that is taken into consideration uh, routing all of these uh, stages because we want to... Well, there goes uh, Dominique. Oh, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. We, Katana Daddy's back, baby! Actually, it's not fine, but oh. it will be fine. <laughs> We're right back here. So we actually kind of need Dominique for a, a, a future boss strategy in this uh, stage alone. However, there are some instances where you can kind of sacrifice so for, you know, yes. a, for lack of a better phrase, because you might actually be using another sub weapon set, another you know set of characters for that boss quick kill. Much like in Curse of the Moon One that you saw a little bit earlier, you're gonna be juggling a lot of these sub weapons and a lot of these characters, quickly swapping between them in order to inflict the maximum amount of DPS. Like you saw in stage two, we're gonna grab this weapon point max yeah. up, which will bump us up to 30, and we actually kind of need don't we need all oh, of yeah. that? for this next fight. And you have to have Dominique there to get that, which is why I had to go back to the checkpoint. But this game, you get checkpoints, which are those candles, and then you can restart the stage as well. So it, it's really nice learning the, uh, learning this game and learning this run that you can really use a lot of those um, checkpoints to kind of reset and get your bearings and make sure you're going into each section with uh, the characters you need. There's a lot of uh, really good, like, beginner-friendly strategies with Dominique. Again, like, uh, you can unlock what's called a single mode, where you go through the entire game with just one character, and there are a slew of, of great techniques around Dominique. This is... I forget. <laughs> like, it's Lubious? supposed to... Lubious, thank there you. There we go. It's supposed to be some sort of illusion. You have uh, some, like, something. But, uh... Are Mushrooms. You see? You're not... Oh, okay, so... so if he would have failed the quick kill, it would have turned into that thing. And that's, yeah. the, that's, the, that's the true identity of that thing. And all of the bosses are going to have these desperation attacks, which on this difficulty will never kill us. So at the end of the stage, you'll just kind of see, you know, the, al the new ally coming in and saving the day. They're really not saving us for anything. And uh, we've got a little cutscene here. So if we can get in two donations as we meet our new friend. Absolutely. I have a $50 donation from DJ4AM. Great to see two of my favorite speedrunners at GDQ together. Good luck with two cursed, two moon, Dan. <laughs> 
<laughs> Thanks, DJ. I have a $50 donation from Hickther. Good luck, Dan. Keep the good vibes going. Always a fun time chilling while you practice. Thank you so, so much for that donation. So oh, thanks, Hector. And shout out to everybody in chat that I know and that's in the Kaizo Discord. And it's always fun to show up and uh, have familiar faces in the crowd. So shout out to all of you folks. If there weren't so many of you, I would thank you individually. <laughs> so we've got the third member of our crew. And you're going to see Robert for a little bit here. And then we're going to put him away because... He has a ranged attack that is extremely slow. And you'll probably notice that I'm jumping and attacking basically every time with all of my characters. That's because grounded attacks you can't move with. And the attack animation on Robert's gun is so long, you can see you're just stuck in place. But we can manage just barely to uh, jump and attack in a few places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Robert kind of has a little bit more utility than damage early on in the game. Uh, what he can do, he can actually cling onto walls and slide down them and also jump from them. So kind of like with uh, Zangetsu and Miriam doing their thing in Curse of the Moon 1, you're going to be seeing a lot of teamwork making the dream work with these extra jumps, extra feats of, uh, of movement that you wouldn't really get anywhere else solo. Yeah, and like the previous stage, you know, you really get to see how Robert uh, works and you really get to learn him casually. But unfortunately for Robert, Dominique really just has the athletics. And unlike Ultimate, nobody has a distinct speed advantage. It's what I really enjoy about this category is everybody has their spot. And you don't have that, you know, star player in Zangitsu just outshining and outrunning everybody. I know Bobby doesn't want to stand for my Zangetsu slam. No, I, I was actually keeping very quiet through this uh, screen alone. If you see the <laughs> if you see the logs descending down that waterfall, so those logs will actually descend or start their global timer as soon as you start the file of the game. Not yeah. not not the not the stage, not the not the screen, but the actual file. So it's a little bit familiar for Dan because he's keeping on pace. But if you're, you know, a new runner trying to try things out, like you must know that you have to react to whatever the logs in the waterfall room give you. Yeah, you cannot rush it there. If you know, if you didn't get there fast enough, you just have to take what you have when you have it, or else you're in for a bad time. We got a lot of movement. We picked up the big gun from Robert, and like. All right, that's one. That's one. There's like three places that Robert just doesn't want to. Uh, cooperate sometimes and that's uh, one down let's go yeah and that was like one of the scarier parts throughout stage three honestly throughout this next boss he's already he's already at oh, oh We're, uh, we got it we got all we got all 30 weapon points we need for robert to show what he's really good for this is the gladiator dozer um if you're trying to figure out what a mix of this is, don't. No. This is the curse of the night, as Dices would say. So, <laughs> uh, he does have a flaming apparatus, which we're actually going to be using to slice at his weak point. And, and the one, big two, three, four, just unloading Let's those go. slugs with the big gun. And with, the, and with that, we will be meeting our final ally, which is my favorite of the bunch. But All right, chat. Audience, you can donate as well. For the rest of the run, it is free game. I've got two dogs at home. I absolutely love them. If you've got your favorite pet, dog, dog puns, anything animal related, as long as it's not birds, that's your challenge. We've got four more stages. I want to hear your favorite dog's name or your favorite dog pun, because we've got the good boy. It is a corgi driving a mech suit. This is wild. No one has ever done this before. Putting a Corgi into a Final Fantasy VI Magitek mech, it just works so well. And, and yes, you can pet the dog in Bloodstained Curse yes, of the Moon you can. <laughs> And NT Creates did some developer commentary when this game were, was coming out. And they talked about designing Hachi and they were like, well, you know, he, he doesn't slide on ice and he's got the highest basic attack and he can go completely invulnerable, he can hover, he can ground pound. Maybe we should nerf him a little bit. And they made the right choice, which was they didn't. He can do all of those things. <laughs> so we're going to utilize Hachi. The only thing he doesn't do is he really doesn't handle boss fights well because his basic attack is the highest.
But after this stage, we're not going to see him very much in boss fights. But he is a platforming beast. And you wouldn't know that this level was slippery until we pull out Robert and show the secondary effect of this big gun. Big! <laughs> yes, we can slide. And that big. this is a good example of the recoil on the big gun. And you're going to see it also gains height if you're mid-air coming up. And uh, that is going to be an important part. This is a new strat, by the way. Can we float? Ooh. Oh. So the Cyclone, which was one of the most underutilized uh, sub-weapons on Dominique, has really gained uh, prominence. And it only does the upward attack if it's underneath an enemy. But then you can get caught in the tailwind, and you just float. As long as you can stay midair, you float, and uh, that's going to matter. It's actually really interesting. Like, Bloodstained Curse of the Moon 2, like, for other categories, you're probably not going to be seeing this, like, parts of the stage, like, otherwise. Like, oh, yeah. Ultimate, Episode 2, Final Episode, all have their different paths to take and all different uh, character uh, strategies with their sub-weapons. So you're all, yeah, like, like Hachi has a utility. Everybody has their little bit of utility here. And so much has changed. I mean, the game's been out for almost three years now, and it seems like every year we've got another runner, we've got somebody else that's like, well, you know, we could just pick up the heart here and make a little jump. But it changes the entire route because all the sub-weapons are guaranteed out of certain lanterns, but you're not guaranteed the ones you want. Because the way the Blue Lanterns work is they all have a primary drop and a secondary drop. And to force the secondary drop, you have to have the primary in it. And so depending on what you have is going to determine all of the future drops. And it's a really a, an interesting and complicated web of just making one change and completely changing the entire route. Coming right. up? Okay, go ahead. I was about to say, coming up, <laughs> we're going to fill up here. There's a couple of cheeky Robert strats you can do here, but I want to make sure we are full on weapon points, and we uh, light it up here. All right, I just used the Demon Essence, which is kind of the most powerful ability that Zangitsu has, and it's really powerful because you can transfer it to other characters. So anytime we've got this purple flame, it's going to boost my basic attack on any character I'm using. So we're going to use Hachi here. It's a little bit of a safe strat because this, these platforms are really slippery, and it's a big time loss if you don't stay on them the entire time. Yeah. So Vepar is actually uh, the first boss that you'll actually come across in Bloodstained Ritual of the Night in the Galleon Minerva. Uh, she doesn't have two phases in that game like she does in uh, in this game. Um, Into Creates definitely takes a lot of the liberties of how bosses interact with the character, interact with the background. Really, really good phase one. Look at that MS Paint blood coming on out and everything. And this is another utility of Hachi where... Vepar will summon these spikes, but since you have that nice grand slam, you're able to dispose of it. We're going to get the flame on, and uh, as Vepar is moving from left to right, once she actually settles, he's going to be positioning for double hits on Hachi. The Corgi doing the work on Vepar here. Let's go. All right, so we're going we're gonna to pick up a couple of things right here, but I, I gave a challenge to chat. So, Nicole, if you can hit me with two donations between levels, we can take them. Absolutely. I have $10 from Moby Doo. Dan and Bobby together on such a cool run for a great cause. Love you both, and good luck. And I also have a $250 donation from Austin. Whip and tear until it is done. So excited to see everyone in person. Can't wait for Step Mania. Thank, you, Thank so you so much for those donations. We're coming into the fifth stage. I'm going to slide here a little bit. That is the fastest rat. <laughs> Yeah, so gotta, we're, we're, ha we're halfway done. Things are really going to heat up, and I'm sorry for that one. <laughs> That's right. It's the volcano stage. Um, what we just picked up for Zangetsu was called the Soul Eraser. This is kind of like a lore-based weapon, which actually upgrades his sub-weapon's abilities. So that magic charm, that demon essence that you saw a little bit earlier, all get amped up to 10 uh, once he pops that essence. All right, here's number two. Oh, come on. 
Now that is actually fine because Robert, like I said, we keep him in the closet for a while and sometimes he just likes to fall off the bottom of the stage. But we can do without him for a little bit because we're going to take Zangitu and we're going to take Dominique and Hachi and make it through most of this stage. Pick up a little bit of health here and there's a couple of rooms coming up. This one, this next one in particular, that is uh, rather, rather taxing, but there's a very specific strat to get through it. So let's see if we can nail it. Yeah, let's watch the serious time. Let's go. I, I absolutely love the rooms in this game that are just so methodical like that. Mm -hmm. You just want to make it through. You want to hold right the entire time. Yeah, this is it's pretty much like, uh, you know, whether it's an indie based off of Castlevania or it's Castlevania itself, one of the most impressive feats of movement is just simply holding right and not letting anything stop you. You know, you say it, you make it sound better than I do, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's... So much of this game is, can I do this without moving my thumb off of the D-pad? Mm -hmm. There we go. We got a little teamwork exclusive right there. You can also use uh, Zangetsu's Demon Essence to destroy that, but that's a bit more of an uh, ultimate friendly strength. All right, let's bring Robert back. We got a checkpoint right there. We don't need exactly all of the things we had because... Using the checkpoint there does reset all of my sub-weapons back to kind of the starter sub-weapons, which are not as good as what I might have had, but we've got backups. I can route in what I need for this boss through the rest of the stage, because we do need Robert for this boss and for the quick kill on it. Um, this is one of the two major um, RNG boss fights as far as time goes. But we've got a pretty consistent strat as long as we pick up both of the items we need, which is going to be the Demon Essence on Zengitsu, and of course, the big gun on Robert. Big gun. Yeah, and then like Dan was saying, just piggybacking off of it, like stage four was actually a little bit of like a taste of what Bars RNG can do for you. Lava Mandra, which is this next boss that's coming right on up, like can waste upwards to like 10, 15 seconds of time. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like Fantoon. You either get, you know... A, a Top or bottom, fast or slow. There you go. All right. And this is a little bit, a little bit more of an underwhelming woo, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lost its voice a little bit. <laughs> hey, you know, the crowd made up for it. We'll take it. Thank you, Chet. <laughs> so I got to count shakes here. Count shakes? Yeah, yeah. You, you count the shakes and because you have to shoot before you can see it. That's fair. Yeah, On yeah. the bottom, you have to shoot before you can see it. We got a rather slow pattern there, but the Demon Essence and Zangitsu is going to make up for it. We get the head at least, so we get the most uptime, and we can spin to win. Uh, that was a good... Yeah, that was a good... Yes. <laughs> We're also going to uh, spin down all the weapon points we've got on Hachi here. This is a big advantage uh, to Hachi now that we have him, is if we end with weapon points, we can always just burn them off on Hachi because he uses them one at a time. So yes. I don't have to do math anymore. Nope, and that's it. You just not do math anymore. Nope. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Y'all were... <laughs> Y'all are sitting here multiplying during your run, and I'm like, man, I picked the right game to run. <laughs> I don't have to do multiplication. Uh, this is one of my favorite stages in the game because it's like, we're trying to, you know, cleave the moon again. We're trying to, like, save the world again, and this is actually some really godlike movement on the climb on up. See if we can oh, let's there go. we go. Really good, really good climb using that big gun. Now let's explore the rest of the museum. Not to mention, we can go surfing on a chest mimic. You know, Hachi turns into a little train when you duck. It's the cutest Isn't that thing. <laughs> he also gets little airplane wings when he flies. Let's get a little serious time here. That's fine. This is one of the like worst like rooms in, in the actual game. Whether you're on Ultimate, Episode 1 or 2, it's definitely because of these uh, spear-wielding folk right here. Very, very long range. 
then very, very pointy. We need Hachi because we need to break open this wall. Luckily, we can get the gauntlet with just about any character other than Zangetsu, so not having him, not a big deal. We've also got a couple of new um, routes that we also don't need Zangetsu. The one really added difficulty about losing Zangetsu he right here is I have the muscle memory of pressing R and L to switch between characters, and now I have one less button press, so... make it up here and see if we can't show off this new strat. All right. I think this is still going to give me the Cyclone. If it's not, we'll have to use the backup strat. It still does. Oh! oh just... But wait. Yeah, there's a bit of a sweet backup here. Just have to wait for the spear to... Uh, there we go. We're still going to make it. We've good still stuff, got good, it. Excellent recovery. So the thing about that, that, that first trick was that, like, you have to switch to Hachi and you have to activate the hover at the apex of yeah. Hachi's jump. So the way that Hachi works is that you only hover at the apex, like Bobby's saying. And so strats like that where you're trying to swap to him... They can be incredibly tough, especially with the big gun, because you're only at that apex for a very small amount of time. Now, shout out to Laxus, uh, longtime record holder, Curse of the Moon 1 normal, who came up with these uh, crawling strats. Give Robert a little bit of time. A little bit of wiggle room, if you would yeah. say. <laughs> All right, we got a couple more rooms coming up, and these are the more difficult ones. How are we doing on health? I think we're all right. Yeah, Some uh, of these enemies do an insane amount of damage. See? Okay. Woo! Let's go! Very scary, pivotal moment in the in the run there. It, like, like, stage six is just a cluster of stage hazards. Nope. <laughs> And, uh, and and what you call it? The other the other big benefit to Hachi is that the knockback that he receives is much smaller, but he can die. No, he do he doesn't die. He escapes the exploding mech. So the dog is unharmed. All right. Well, we'll be seeing him a little bit later in the run. You know? <laughs> Thank you for clarifying that. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> Really, you want Zangitsu for this section, and Hachi is also the other character that I don't really need to have. Actually, I do at this point. Let's see. Yeah, we're going to just go back to this checkpoint. We're going to start fresh because stage six wants to give me good RNG. I can feel it. So we're going to come back here with the full crew so we can show off uh, Titan Common, which I know you don't very much enjoy. I know it's gonna, I know it's gonna surprise everybody. Bobby also speed runs this game. Ooh. All right. We got that twice, which is the actual hard part. But now we've got Zangitsu in this uh, Crescent Moon Slash, which is gonna let us make quick work of all this. Um, Dominique really hard to use here as well with Hachi, because Dominique's high jump gets you into those spikes, which is not where you want to be. But now we've got Robert. Um, I, I refuse to call this the scarf, but this is Robert's rapid scarf. It is a bandana. I'm, I'm saying it's a mistranslation, but uh, we're going to use Robert <laughs> and his bandana. Um, this fight is terribly time loss uh, creating with its RNG in just about every other category than this because it really doesn't lose time to grab the rapid scarf for Robert and we're going to clear out these turrets and no matter where we are, the pillar spawns are preset. Where the boss is, isn't. So like right now, I can only hit him with Robert and if we didn't have this, uh, it's not a good time. But we'll be able to get through here, make sure we don't fall off. Oh, it actually is going to let me use Zangitsu here. And that is nice. Titan Common. Bleed off these weapon points. We got two stages left. Hit me with two more donations. Absolutely. I have some puns you might have specifically Just keep requested. them coming. <laughs> I have Give me five. Oh, what? Oh, sure. I have $50 from DJ4AM. Why is the dog's favorite snack a quesadilla? 
because of the hot cheese. No, yeah, you go ahead, audience, it's fine. I have $10 from Pumpkin Spice. Hot dog, I sure do love puns. It's impossible not to. Thank you, Pumpkin Spice. I have $15 from Mike. We all have to join the Corgi and Howl at the Curse of the Moon. Awu! Thank you very much for that donation. I have $5 from Tempest Mask, 1,000. Choo-choo, here comes the Great Dane Train. Thanks for the pun clearance, Dan. Keep on being epic, and it's an honor to run some of the games you do. Also, hi, Bobby. Hi, Nicole. Hi. Keep them coming. I have $50 from Purple. I want the hammer to break my coffee table. Thanks for that energy, Purple. That's fantastic. I do too. <laughs> I have $5 from Triumphant Face. Fave Castlevania enemy is Julius Belmont. $5 train. Thank you so much. Anonymous donates $25. What a wonderful night to have a charity marathon. Thank you, Anonymous. $25 from Bocelli. What a terrible night to have a curse of the moon. Thank you All so right, much for so that we've donation. We've got a couple more platform sections here, which this stage works the same as previous. These have been, these platforms have been running the entire time we've been playing yeah. this game. Luckily, they aren't too terribly slow, and we can use Hachi's invulnerability. Um, like Jeebel in Curse of the Moon 1, uh, Hachi only has one ability, so that we're never, we're always going to be able to get weapon points from blue pots. Um, or blue lanterns, I should say. We're going to take advantage of that, get some bonus here. We've got another really new strat coming up. And the back, I almost like the backup better than the strat. So we're going to see if I can first, I'll still try to first try it, I guess. I'm telling you, I, I think the backup is actually a little bit faster, but we'll see. <laughs> I think it's faster if you don't get the, uh, the lantern jump. Mm. Well, we'll see. Oh, Woo! let's go! Big gun! All this is brand new to the run with only uh, the newest world record holder adding all of this in. And it's, it's so much fun to come back to this game just having not played it for even months because all of the branching paths are designed and you just see new parts of the game just because one thing changes. And like we were saying a little bit earlier in the interview, actually, where it's like, it's people from all over the world developing these strats and communicating with one another to just, like, refine this route. Yo, are we going to get the bits? Go! Oh. Those are the two hardest strats in the game. So die as many times as I have. Those two feel incredible. These float strats are just so sick. Dude, I'm telling you. It makes you want to run normal, doesn't it? No. Yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> uh, coming up is a boss that you might find familiar if you tuned into the last, I don't know, hour of SGDQ 2023. Spoilers. <laughs> All right, we're using the Demon Essence. We've got Zangitsu. And, like, I don't know. I guess, I guess Grimory got downgraded. She couldn't no. take care of She got demoted, maybe. I don't know. They demoted her from final boss, but she's actually buffed in this. You can no longer, if you were to take Alfred into this and have like a little fire shield, no longer would that be happening here. Hey, we got good RNG, though. She put her hands up yeah, for us. Yeah, hands up in the air, hands which means we have a pretty enclosed space to just, you know, nickel and dime with the demon essence. And again, not only is he is he getting a DPS off the bzz, but you're getting one plus one plus one bonus damage the entire way. Just Let's one go. more. And again, every boss has their desperation move. You didn't really see one from Gremory uh, in Curse of the Moon 1, but we have a seismic toss that includes a moon. And this is actually really random where she drops the moon at. So you can potentially get hit and you know be... Uh, There's no point in, a, in avoiding that, but it is fun. I did learn there's more than one moon, so maybe that's like a moon of Mars, maybe? <laughs> a moon of... What, what moon do you think? What's your favorite moon? Yeah. Audience, y'all got a favorite moon? R wrong answers only. I can't, hear any, I can't hear what they're saying, so I'm assuming they're actual moons. <laughs> did somebody say DuckTales? Yeah, they sure did. I think we just got copyright strike just by saying DuckTales. But I also think we have a winner. <laughs> Yeah, I would agree. All right, we have a swarm of locusts that's going to be uh, chasing us throughout the entire... It's like a Resident Evil sequence, where it's going to be chasing us throughout the entire interior of the castle. We're going to pick up the Lacard Spear again. You're going to be seeing the vault of these uh, vertical uh, rooms, even. 
and uh, trying to outrun this locust swarm. Now, it's not an all deadly swarm. You can actually knock it back by inflicting damage on it, but it's a little bit slow. Like, like we, we just, again, just want to keep moving without any hindrances whatsoever. Yes. We're gonna use a little bit of Hachi here to uh, not get knocked back and just kind of walk into this guy to set up. All right, Robert. That's amazing. Is, Robert is two for three. I'll take that. He can stick around. <laughs> that that is the hardest one to pull off with Robert because if you mm -hmm. get the wall cling there, you just slide slowly and miserably yeah. to your death. And if you're too early on the initial damage boost, your invulnerability runs out. So yep. Be really, really careful. All of these weapon point strats are really, really tight. You can see I'm at Ooh. zero. Zero! Ooh, let's go. All right, first climb coming up. It's actually a really, really uh, arduous climb since you have all these locusts, these uh, flame turrets, just like, you know, nickel and diamond at you. Uh, but we can actually cut this uh, traverse time in half using that Lacard Spear special ability for as... Let's go. Yeah, that's a really good climb one. You have to be really, really conscious. I didn't know you could pick a bandana there. You have yeah. to be really, really conscious of where you spend those weapon points. Again, much like in Crimson Moon 1, like you either use it for skips or you either use it for boss strategy. So you kind of got to, it's a balance of both. And thankfully, you have 40 maximum weapon points to, to mess around with in episode one. All right, we're coming up on the end. Got one more climb, but this climb is kind of like a cinematic climb. And you'll see, come on, come on, thank you. Nice. You'll see what I mean. We're going to pick up a couple extra weapon points here just so we don't have to struggle. And this is the final climb. It's a workout. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Uh, uh, slightly walk over here. Uh, 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 just, just, it's arm day, baby. It's arm day, and we're already at the throes of the final boss. All right, we've got, we'll have a little bit of time getting in. Uh, fit me in two donations, if you would. Absolutely. I have $25 from James and Otis the Corgi. Shout outs to Dan for the great run. Bobby for the killer commentary, and of course, the star of the show, the Corgi in the Max suit. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I have a $2,000 donation from Shy Guy 32 What a horrible night to have a curse. Thank no. you so much. Thanks, James. That is my little brother, and he does indeed have the best dog, the best Corgi. We're gonna make it through the first phase of Beelzebub here. Um, bugs may be worse than birds. I don't know, the verdict is out. <laughs> I could be convinced. Now we're gonna have to be really, really careful about how we spend our weapon points here because we wanna keep a certain amount for the for the second phase of Beelzebub. Yeah, Rob, er, Robert is gonna make himself worth it in this second stage or in this second Wait. phase. I will call time when we get to it. Um, it's a little, uh, we're gonna tiptoe on the edge here, so hopefully we can make it. This is such a precise strategy. This is probably the hardest boss in all of the game. You see him creeping up on phase two. Dan, how are you gonna take him down? I'm gonna jump. Oh. We're there. I think we got enough pixels on the platform to survive. And we do! All right, time's coming up. Time! Let's go! Episode one completed in 37 minutes. Let's go. 15 seconds under estimate. Teamwork making the dream work. This is Dan the VP, everybody. Make sure you go follow him on Twitter, on Twitch, and wherever he may be. He's not in Barb's chat. Yeah, thank, thanks again for, for the games committee letting letting us show off both of these games. It's really privileged to have two indies back to back like this. Shout out to the crowd. Shout out to everybody at home. Hi, mom. Hi, Jess. My wife at home with our two dogs. I love you. It's uh, fantastic to be here. I'm here all week. Come say hi. Come learn one of the games that uh, I know. And we've got Symphony of the Night coming up. Who's ready for Who's Symphony ready of the Night Rando? And that's going to be so incredibly hyped. Dan, you got any any more parting words before we 
Leave you the know, space. it's it, it's Monday. It feels like Sunday. I'm going to be on a high the rest of the week. I'm looking forward to the rest of the runs. All the Mario, all the Symphony of the Night. I, I don't know what to say other than thanks for having me. Enjoy the rest of the marathon. Back to you. An absolute amazing run. Thank you so much. Molly Ranchers donates $25 and says GG's. And congrats to Dan the VP. Heart emoji. Thank you so much for your donation. Let's take a quick break and stretch, get water, do whatever you need to do. We will be right back. Welcome on back to SGDQ 2023. I'm Nicole Goodnight. I hope you're all having a fantastic night, morning, wherever you are. I have a $5 donation from Qatar that says, DuckTales, moon. So, thank you. <laughs> thank you for that donation. <laughs> I have $100 from Zorande that says, Castlevania hype. Thank you so much. And again, chat, audience, everyone involved, thank you so much for meeting that incentive for Symphony of the Night randomizer. I am so, so excited for that. We have some amazing things coming up as well, like Katana Zero upgrade to hard mode. We are now at 1,200 out of 5,000 needed for that. It's only 3,800 to go. Also, we are at 254,459 already raised for Doctors Without Borders. Give yourselves a hand. Yeah, you did this. 
Thank you so much. I have $20 from Jam dropping in some B-Day money for the Castlevania randomizer. Well, Jam, happy birthday first off, and I'm so excited again that we got that met. I have $25 from Raza. They say, what a horrible night to have a curse, but what a great night to have a speedrun. I agree, it's a great night to have a speedrun. Thank you so much for that donation. I have a $15 from Fly on Wall that simply says, bzz, bzz. thank you. I think in, in Fly language, that means that they're extremely excited for SGDQ. And speaking of that incentive, I have $50 from King Lear. Let's see some hard mode Katana Zero. Thank you so much for that donation. The Stradivarian donates $20. Good luck to the runners. And please, let's not forget about the Hearthstone incentive, too. Always fun to see what folks create for games like that. And they are, of course, referring to the Hearthstone Knights of the Frozen Throne Trick Showcase, which is at 1,429 out of 10,000. When you donate, just make sure to select what incentive you would like your donation to go to. I have $25 from Riggsy. Here's to seeing a beautiful symphony, a Castlevania symphony of the night, that is. Thank you very much. And with that, we are all ready for an interview, so let's go ahead and go on over to that. <laughs> 